In this video, I'm going to be showing you the beginner's guide to blogging and give you the exact framework that I follow whenever I'm creating a new site, creating new keywords and publishing content online. I've been lucky enough to be able to coach over 1000 students in a blogging community called Blog Growth Engine. Now, this has paved the way for me to scale my website, learn how to write content that ranks and be able to partner with amazing companies. If you're tired of seeing cookie cutter templates online, then this video is exactly for you. So let's go ahead and jump into this presentation. I'm gonna show you the A through Z process of starting a blog that is profitable and something that is worthwhile. So let's go ahead and jump into my screen and go through the training together. All right, so here we are to the beginner's guide to blogging. And one thing I wanted to inform you of is that I'm actually doing this on a brand new site and I wanted to show you exactly how you can do the same thing. And I didn't want to, you know, not show proof results. And this is exactly why I'm doing this video is to give you a legitimate case study and take you along the journey with me. So this is an age domain. This is a site that uh, I've had for over a year, but I only had two articles on it. I never did anything with it. It did have a YouTube channel. I was just inspired and I wanted to go ahead and start creating content on this and also show this as a project in case study for you. This is gonna be a credit and debt site and I'm gonna show you the entire process of what I'm doing so you can also model the same thing. I'll be building a brand on Google and YouTube for the site. And I don't want you to think it's easy. These videos will show you what it takes to win. And I'm going to give you the step by step process. You shouldn't be in the mindset of just publishing content. You're going to need to be on multiple platforms. Making mistakes is OK, but as long as you start publishing content, whether it's on Google, YouTube, short form content, the goal is to just start and start publishing. Here's exactly what's going to be on the blogging menu for today. Number one, we're going to find the profitable niche. We're going to choose a blog domain name and blogging platform. We're going to configure and I'm going to show you the SEO settings that I follow, the blog design that I'm creating, finding keywords and creating a content plan, writing and publishing posts, a few link building tactics, monetizing your blog, and also leveraging other social platforms. So the first step in this process is finding a profitable niche. Now, this is something that everybody gets stuck on, but the first question that I ask every single person when starting affiliate marketing or a blog is, can you identify a niche that you can stick to for the next 12 to 24 months? If you say yes, then that is probably the niche that you're gonna wanna stick to, whether it's something that you're an expert in or you have a lot, a lot of experience in. That is. 100% the niche that you want to go into. So for me, it was credit repair. Credit repair is something that I've been doing since I got out of the military. And I know there's a lot of affiliate marketing opportunities, sponsorship deals, and things that I could focus on in even a course if I wanted to create one in the credit repair industry. So you can choose something in these three categories that can be in wealth, health, or relationships. Now you can use tools like Glimpse, explodingtopics.com, to find emerging trends. And if you still have no idea after that, then you can use a site called Motion Invest. So Motion Invest will help you kind of think about ideas because this is a place where people sell and buy websites. If you're someone who wants to know what's already working, then Motion Invest is going to be the place for you to kind of find and gather information on sites that are making money from affiliates or display ads. So once you kind of figured out a few different topics, then you can go ahead and refine your niche by reviewing what's already ranking on Google or just find things on YouTube, maybe even on TikTok since they have their own search algorithm and kind of just start to pinpoint the topic that you want to write first and go from there. So let's go ahead and jump into ChatGPT real quick and I'm going to give you some prompts and also even go over Motion Invest and Glimpse uh, so you can kind of refine your niche. Again, this is what I did when I was looking through the credit repair industry. So once you're inside ChatGPT, you're gonna go ahead and use this prompt. I'm starting a blog and YouTube channel. Help me find my niche that offers monetization potential, low hanging keyword opportunities, and something that will be around for years. Give me 10 different topics or niche ideas around these three categories, wealth, health, or relationship. So we're gonna let it do its thing. So we just got a bunch of good information from ChatGPT here. And under the wealth category, we have the fire movement, cryptocurrency, side hustles. Under health, we have mental wellness, plant-based nutrition, fitness routines for busy people, and also different things under the relationship category. So based off of this alone, you can continue telling ChatGPT to add more information or even more categories under a specific niche or uh, department. And this will help you continue to gather more information that you might want to go into. 
Now, just for example, again, you can let's say we're going to do uh, the fitness routines for busy people. So I want to say, let's choose fitness routines for busy people. Give me 10 different topics that I could go down further within this niche. So it's giving us more information here. And again, this is just using ChatGPT. You can also go onto different platforms once you found your topic. But we have seven minute workouts. We have desk exercises, mobile apps for fitness tracking, lunch break workouts, effective home gym setups, yoga and stretching routines for stress relief, nutrition for busy people. So I mean, there's so many different things here. You can continue moving forward and continue adding on and kind of having a conversation with the AI to think about what you want to do. So you can even just continue saying like, hey, give me another 30 topics. Hey, what kind of product categories can I find? Think about the products. Think about the affiliate offers that you can sell as an affiliate um, under the you know fitness for lazy, busy people, whatever it may be. Um, and kind of go from there. So that's kind of how I find my niche in credit. So next step is you can go to Motion Invest where you can buy or sell websites. So if we look here, we have filters. So you can create a free online account. You don't have to pay at all to see these, but you can choose a niche. So these are all these different niche ideas under this filter section. But if we look at the right hand corner, you can see that we have a recipe site that is selling for $850. It's just a starter site. So it's monetized with AdSense or Google AdSense. So it has a little bit of income potential. Um, you can look at other places like the health niche, just like we talked about. This is healhow.com. And it's currently making about $168 a month. And they're asking $5,000 for that. That is insane. So it's getting about 25,000 visitors. Um, it's monetized with Ezoic ads, which is a Google ads replacement. And uh, last but not least, we can go to Glimpse. And this is a trend spotting tool. So if you scroll all the way to the very bottom here, you'll notice that we have different trends in different categories. Again, it all falls back to that. We have trends in health and wellness, consumer goods, business, food and beverages, beauty, startup entertainment. So whatever you chose, you can look further down this funnel. And let's say we go into skincare trends. We can see a bunch of different ideas here from highest growth or highest volume. Now you can just confirm that, you know, these are things that people are actually searching for. So we have you know, caffeine eye creams, we have different types of eye creams, you could probably come an affiliate for, you know, you have water filters, different types of skincare. So just do this, spend a day or spend a few days just thinking about what you want to write about. Um, you can use these tools to come up with more information. Uh, they got they get a lot of data from the whole internet. So you know, there's that there's exploding topics, just take the time, pick your niche. And I promise you that you'll find something that's going to work in favor for you. And you're going to be able to kind of think about for the next 12 to 24 months. And it's exactly why I'm doing credit repair and showing you with that case study, uh, because I see myself doing that for many years to come. Next up is choosing your blog domain name. So this is something that many people get stuck on. But essentially, the domain name doesn't matter as much as this one important thing is you need to build a brand. So whether it's your personal name, whether it's a corporate name, as long as you're building a brand off of that, then that is the most important aspect of this business model. So you can have a, you know, Instagram account with the brand or personal name. You have a YouTube channel. You have, you know, you have all these different I people that are doing this, uh, whether it's a personal or corporate brand. But as long as you can remember who they are and what platforms are on, then you're doing something right. So building a brand means more than just publishing articles. You need to be on other platforms and get branded searches. What this leads to in Google's eyes is off page authority. Off page authority is one of the most important things, in my opinion, especially with the rise of AI and tools that are making it easier to publish content. If you're building authority, then you're going to look more of an expert in Google's eyes and the user. And that is the most important thing because we're trying to make revenue and we're trying to build a brand on top of that. You can either purchase your domain name with a platform like GoDaddy, which is very, very affordable. But I personally buy all of my domains with WPX, which is also my hosting provider. The reason why I say that is because they offer free who is privacy for all of their domains that you purchase with them. So I don't have to pay extra for that. Sometimes people pay an extra, you know, 20 bucks a year, 10 bucks a year to pr to protect that. But with WPX, it's completely free and go ahead and get started buying your domain name. Please don't overthink it. My domain name is super simple and it's in the credit industry. So just keep it simple. And also one important thing is that you don't want to pigeonhole yourself either. So if you're going to be talking about, you know, like for me, credit, I'm not going to just be talking about credit repair. So I'm not going to be, you know, creditrepair101.com. I'm just going to be creditxyz.com. 
So don't pigeonhole yourself, but also don't overwhelm yourself with too many ideas. Next up is the blogging platform. So the blogging platform of my choice is wordpress.org as my CMS, and I'm using WPX as my hosting provider. There's a lot of different platforms you can choose, but the ones I don't recommend for what we do here or what I'm doing is do not use Wix, Squarespace, or any of these platforms that where you don't have too much control. Just that's just what I've seen for the past few years. You know, both of my blogs are doing well on WordPress and I'm using WPX as my premium hosting provider. Uh, they have never failed me. So they are one of the most expensive hosting companies out there. They are $25 a month. And again, I get premium support. I get premium hosting. So if you are a beginner and you're just starting this out, then you can go for a platform like Hostinger, which only charges about $2.99 uh, for a month. So it's a lot more affordable. But the great thing about this is that once you start getting traffic, you start bringing in some revenue, you can actually migrate your site to a different platform like WPX completely for free. One other platform that you can definitely look into is ghost.org. Now, this one, I recommend it for anyone who doesn't want to be on WordPress because I've seen other people rank their content using ghost.org. But for my credit site, I am just basically using WordPress. So that leads into kind of configuring the SEO settings and the plugins that I use in WordPress. So number one, when you start this process, you just want to get familiar with WordPress. And I mean, really get familiar with it. You're going to want to click everything and take your time understanding the dashboard what it looks like. You're going to want to look at your user settings, the posts, the pages. You want to just take the time to really scan through every single setting that you can go through and, and understand where, you know, where everything is inside of WordPress. So you never have any confusion or get overwhelmed. So once you've done that, you then want to go to configure your WordPress settings, which I'll show you in just a bit, and then have a very simple plugin stack. The plugin stack is going to be important because you want to keep it very lean. You don't want to have too many plugins and just kind of have a very simple setup so you don't have too much bloating on your site and you want your site to load really fast. So the ones I use on my theme are Thirsty Affiliates. You can also use Lasso WP if you want a higher end affiliate product management tool. But Thirsty Affiliates is a free link cloaking plugin and also affiliate management plugin. Next up, I use Google Site Kit to actually manage my Google Search Console and my Google Analytics. And I set that up with Google Site Kit and they do it for you. So it's basically like 90% automated. Next up, I use W3 Total Cache, which is a caching plugin which removes a bunch of bloating from CSS or JavaScript on your site. Then you want to make sure that you have this one specific tool, which is Rank Math SEO. Now, Rank Math SEO, that it basically sums up the entire internal SEO process of your site in WordPress, meaning it creates a sitemap for you, which you need for Google to crawl. It also works with schema. So schema is something that makes things easier for Google to uh, understand what's on your page. So schema is considered structured data. And all of this is automatically implemented when you have Rank Math SEO. Then you want to have some kind of cookie notice and compliance plugin. This just makes sure that you're compliant with like any GDPR laws or anything like that. And then the theme that I use is Thrive Suite. I don't recommend it for everyone because it is a uh, all in one theme, but it's the one that I've been using for about three and a half years. And it works really well because I can create content boxes. I can create affiliate product boxes. I can design it however I want. Um, it's a drag and drop builder. But most people kind of rely on Cadence or any Gutenberg block editor. So I just wanted to show you quickly about WPX and how that works. And no, this is not a sponsored video. I am an affiliate, but just giving you an example of what this would look like when you sign up. So number one, they have a very simple pricing plans. So you can look here through their business is the one I'm actually using. It's $24.99 a month. If you pay for the yearly plan, it's you get two months off completely for free because you're paying for the yearly plan. But beyond that, once you're ready, you're going to go ahead and click on start now. Then you're going to pick the plan. So this is going to be the business plan. And if you already have a domain name, so let's say you bought it from GoDaddy, you can go ahead and enter that here and then redirect your uh, name servers to WPX. Or if you're brand new, don't have a domain name, kind of like what I did when I started was I went ahead and added my domain name here to purchase it with WPX. So you can choose anything random and they're going to make sure that it's available. So this is available, of course. So hopefully nobody has that domain name. <laughs> and then you're going to go ahead and continue. Then next up, it's going to tell you about your hosting location. So of course, since I'm in the USA, I'm going to go ahead and click on USA. Okay, then next up, you're going to add all of your uh, details 
details here, your private information. So your first name, last name, address, and then your method of payment. But the cool thing is you get a bunch of different things here. So you get free website migrations to WPX if you're on another platform. Like I said, uh, you get, you know, 24 seven live chat support and the overall price is $38. So that's not too bad for running an entire website uh, for that price. Um, and then if you have any questions, you can reach out to their customer support. And then once you make the purchase, you're install WordPress. And I'm going to go take you over to that right now and show you what my settings look like. All right. So we're inside of WordPress. I don't want to overwhelm you with this process. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I normally look at when I'm ever I'm setting up a new WordPress site. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to go to your user settings. So you can do that on the right hand corner or you can go to your um, users and then look at all users but this is going to click here first thing that you want to do is well if you want to change the color scheme you can do so here so you can change the color and how that looks like in your wordpress dashboard uh since i'm a huge coffee lover i'm going to stick with coffee and we look down you're going to add in your first name your last name you can you can add a nickname if you want to you can also change your display name you can add in your website details so you want to make sure that says https and then for rank math seo this is for the schema part that i told you about the structured data you can add in your social signals so twitter facebook youtube whatever it may be the most important part right here is you want to add in your biographical uh, information here then you're going to want to set up your image with gravatar so this is going to take you to a separate page where you just set up a Gravatar, which is hosted on WordPress.com. Don't get scared. Just set up the Gravatar based on this link and don't do anything else. It's going to automatically merge uh, your Gravatar image to your WordPress setting. Next up, you can uh, add in any specific details here from Rank Math. Uh, you can add in, you know, I'm using Thrive theme, so I can add my social signals here. And then before you do anything, you just want to hit update profile. <clears throat> the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your settings and then look at uh, permalinks. So your permalink setting is uh, really important. So I use a custom structure. I remove this little slash here. Uh, most people leave it. So in the beginning of your blog, before you publish any articles, you can change this right now. So you can just have it as the post name. If you've already published content, if you've already, you know, have your site live, then if you change this now, after the fact, it's going to ruin all of your URLs and it's going to create four or four pages and break your entire site. So if you're going to do this, you have to do it immediately. If not, don't worry about it. Just stick to the post name. So beyond that, uh, you have all these other things. I mean, I have my Google site kit here. This is Google site kit set up. Um, you can see that I'm kind of like, you know, looking at my traffic. Everything is looking great. Uh, you can view, you know, what kind of keywords I'm ranking for. Uh, and then again, double check all of your plugins. So make sure that you download the correct plugins to your site. So just like I told you, I have a cookie compliance uh, plugin. I have rank math. I have site kit W3 total cash. And then this is my thrive suite plugins. This is super lean. You don't want anything else unless you really want something. But this is what I'm doing for all my sites and everyone that I work with. And then from there, everything else is kind of plug and play. And, you know, just double check everything. Make sure that you're good to go. And that is how I create all my WordPress uh, accounts and setups. So the next part in this entire setup is creating the perfect design with ending the search journey in mind. So the every single website that I create and for this credit site, I'm creating the home page, the about page, blog posts, and a start here page. The start here page can be a newsletter, a course, a lead magnet, or your services. So just keep it super simple. And the, one of the most important things too, as a, a marketer, you need to have the right legal pages in place. So I use Amir Law's legal templates. She's a blogger who is also a lawyer and created legal templates. And I'll try to see if I can link that in the description below. Um, and it more than likely will be an affiliate link. So just letting you know there. Now you can also create or purchase content block design templates so you can make your design look very beautiful. I'm going to give you some examples. I'm going to show you what my website looks like using Thrive Themes as my content block design template. And I'm going to give you an example with Cadence, uh, which is another WordPress theme that I highly recommend if you don't want to go with Thrive Themes. All right, so I'm going to show you what my website looks like. And yes, I know some things are going to be blurred here, but unfortunately, we have a lot of people that steal information and also copy and paste content. I can guarantee that if you look for my name, you'll probably find this site either way. Um, so for now, I'm going to show you the home page. So the home page is super simple. We have a title. We have a subheading here and I have my logo design. I have a simple menu header. And if you look at the bottom, 
I have my latest articles and you can look at my about me page, which is really, really simple. So my about me page, I try to keep it less than about 800 words. You can try to go for 1200, but just keep it simple. 600, 800 words is perfect. So all of this is right here. I'm also setting up a course for the credit uh, site. So I have a services page here stuck with a bad credit score. The course is being updated as of right now in the making of this video. And also I have my blog role page. And I want to show you uh, exactly kind of like the perfect affiliate design layout, which is uh, doesn't have to be complicated, but let's go ahead and look at that real quick. All right, so this is how my blog posts are currently looking like. This might change over time, but for now, I'm just going to keep this. I mean, like the color scheme, I'm not sure if I really like it too much. I'm going to continue changing it, but this is all done by me. I'm not hiring a web designer, anything like that. This is all done with Thrive Themes. So, you know, we have the title, we have the category, uh, we have a really simple sidebar navigation, and you know, I have this content box that I created. So all of our content is fact checked and has affiliate links and I have my disclaimer. And then on the sidebar, it's a sticky sidebar that also has a call to action to the company that I am affiliated with. So it takes them to the affiliate link and I can also get paid with that company. Then I have a top choice box. Again, this can continue changing over time, but that top choice box is again, the credit per company. I have my affiliate link and I have a simple table of contents. So now I have a top three co uh, product box. So this is the top three companies that I work with. Uh, and again, they're making me revenue. So credit per cloud, client dispute manager. I talk about the company. I also have dispute B here. So there's a ton of different things. <clears throat> and I follow a simple formula for my heading structures. So uh, all of this is going to be said in the video. So all of this here is a simple, simple setup. I think this is the perfect layout for what I'm trying to do, which is just affiliates and maybe display ads and sponsorship. So that is how a article would look like on my site. And I want to show you some other examples. So this one is a really good one from Site Builder Report. They actually uh, are ranking for a ton of content. But if you look at their layout, guarantee you that they're probably bringing a ton of conversions in. So let's just look at their uh, table box here. So this is their overview for the best website builders. Then we have their uh, individual product rankings. So we have number one, the Squarespace uh, star rating pros and cons. But look what they do to really keep your eyes on the box. So as you're scrolling down, you can see that this button follows you. Same thing with security. Security has an amazing website layout. They have amazing product reviews, so you can see kind of like what their boxes look like here. They are ending the search journey. That's what's you know in mind here. So you can really mimic or model these companies here. So I think these product boxes are amazing. So just kind of have a formula, keep a simple process in place and do the exact same thing. Now that you understand what a website should look like, then you're going to choose either of these themes. Number one, you can use Thrive Themes. Again, that's the one that I'm currently using. So either way, there's so many different things you can do here. I mean, all of these are built into Thrive Suite. Again, it works and that's why I'm using it. So next up, you can also use Cadence. So Cadence is another website theme and block builder that you can use that is much more affordable. It has a little bit of a you know learning curve as well. But I have a buddy named Jake who created a start blogging template that is built on uh, on top of Cadence. So it's called a child theme. So you can actually buy his templates, which is plug and play and uses all of the core pages that we talked about. And you can also set up the legal pages, but this entire theme is already built for you. So if you don't want to do Thrive themes like I did, then you can use Cadence and build on top of a child theme like Discover. So this is built from my buddy Jake. You can see the demo. It's super simple, super clean, and it's already optimized for affiliate conversions. Meaning if you look at the listicle product uh, post overview, he has all of the boxes already set for you. He has the affiliate choices, just like the one I showed you. He has pros and cons. I mean, everything here is perfect. So if you want to use that, you can skip the you know week of website building and use his template or you can just use thrive themes but for my credit site i'm using thrive themes so i'm just going to jump into figuring out the keywords and the content plan uh, because that is also very important next up we're going to be finding keywords so this is what i'm doing for the credit repair site and there are many ways to find keywords including using different tools and trust me there are so many different tools just based on this slide here i'm using probably about eight to 10 different tools. Most of them are free. Some of them are paid. So the most important thing to remember is this when starting your blog, 
you want to focus on becoming an authority on a specific topic and always answer the intent behind someone's search. So if someone's typing in something specific, you need to think about that as a, vi a visitor as well. And what is the search journey and what is that person trying to achieve or what is their what, what, what kind of answer do they want? You want to answer that and that's going to help you with your keyword research process uh, throughout this entire thing. So the important types of search intent is going to be informational, transactional and commercial. These are the ones that I'm focusing on for the site. And those are going to be how to guides. They're going to be case studies around credit. They're going to be long list style content such as pillar posts that could be, you know, tips and tricks and resources. So long list style content. Next up, I'm creating transactional posts. So, you know, five best credit repair software. Next is commercial intent. So commercial content is going to be your product reviews, your product comparisons, product alternatives. This alone will help you find about 30 to 50 article ideas just from these three search intent types. The tools and resources that I'm using for this project is going to be Ahrefs, Exploding Topics, and or Glimpse. I'm going to be looking at my competitors, Surfer SEO's keyword research tool, Google Keyword Planner, which is free, ChatGPT and Google Gemini, which are semi free. I'm looking at subreddits and kind of looking at communities and see what people are talking about. I use keyword insights to validate the search intent. You get three free searches per month. So that's all I really need because you start to learn it as you go. I use my own brain. So I'm thinking about questions. I'm thinking about things that I found. Maybe I've watched a commercial on a product. Maybe I talk to a buddy of mine who's in the credit pair space and they're talking about a new company or product coming out. And I'm also using Trello or Google Sheets to kind of save my ideas. So using this entire process, I try to find about 30 to 60 keyword ideas before I do anything else. And then I move on to the next steps, which is building a content plan. But let me just give you some examples of uh, what I do in order to find keywords. So this is how I'm currently finding keywords. And this is an ever evolving process. But I go into ChatGPT and I tell it to do this if I'm a complete beginner. Give me 25 words or phrases related to XYZ. Whatever the topic is, you can do this a thousand times, but let's just start off with credit scores. So it's going to give us 25 different words and phrases related to credit scores. And this is really important because you can add this to your keyword research tool. You can use this with glimpse, exploding topics, or any other a clustering tool that out there. So it gave us a bunch of good ones. We have FICO score, credit report, credit freeze. So you could even say, give me 10 more if you really want to, but let's just, yeah, let's just do that for fun. So what I consider these, I consider these called uh, seed keywords. So seed keywords is going to be the main keyword or the main word for a specific topic that you want to go into. And this will lead down to a huge rabbit hole of content ideas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these seed keyword. I'm going to go into Ahrefs, which is the keyword research tool of my choice. You don't have to use it. It's very expensive. So you can look at key search or SEMrush. So let's jump into Ahrefs. Let's go to the keywords explorer. And in here, you can add a ton of different keywords, which will count as one credit. So I'm going to enter that here and I'm going to grab the new ones too. So I forgot about this one. Let's grab the other 10 that I talked about. You can pick and choose. So there's some that I don't like. Let me double check. All right, perfect. I think these are pretty good. So we'll go ahead and just do this for now. And this is just one idea, but go ahead and click on search. All right. And the next step that I take is don't get overwhelmed by this. You're going to go to matching terms and then you're going to want to use the keyword filters properly. So I do, you know, for a brand new site, you might want to do 20 and below. You can go ahead and add the lowest DR. So meaning there's a website that's ranking on the first page of Google with a uh, with not that much authority, meaning that there's opportunity and a potential to rank for this. So let's just do DR of 30 in top 10, you can add more filters. So you can add like a CPC value, uh, anything like that, but it's just to keep it simple. So this to show results. So it went from 20,000 to 12,000. Now here are a ton of new keywords that I could probably go after. I'm going to save them so I can add them to a spreadsheet. You can export this list. You're going to want to look at the SERP details and see who's ranking on the first page for this. But overall, this is what I'm doing to find keyword ideas and make sure that I'm actually going after something that I can rank for. So scan the uh, Google search uh, on incognito mode, look at the competitors, view all the data, save all the easiest keywords first and go from here. So, you know, we have inexpensive bankruptcy. We have chapter seven bankruptcy in Florida, credit report samples. I mean, there's so many cool and unique ideas for my niche in credit repair. So this is what I'm doing uh, with Ahrefs. Next up, you can go to Glimpse, which again is a trend spotting tool built on top of 
Google Trends. So you can open Glimpse up here. They have a free trial or premium free premium account and you can go ahead and add in a seed keyword. So let's just do FICO score. And what it's going to do is going to pull up relevant data that is currently being searched and updated as of this month. So I can find a ton of cool, unique ideas based on the monthly search traffic. If you scroll to the very bottom, you'll have a people also search section. This will give me every single uh, long tail keyword or question that people are typing around FICO score. So all of these here are probably going to be somewhat of a good ideas. So you can either save this entire CSV file and then enter that into Ahrefs or your keyword research tool of choice and start scanning the, the, the SERPs and finding your content ideas. So this is perfect for anyone who's looking for you know, even questions around a transactional post. So if I put credit per software, I can find people also search uh, search questions that might relate to my topic. So I can see like, you know, what is the best credit per software? I can find other credit per software keyword ideas, long tail keywords. So that's what I do with Glimpse and Ahrefs. You can also review your co competition. So if I go to my competitors, they're obviously doing something right that's allowing them to rank on the first page of Google. So let's go and look at one of the competitors, badcredit.org, and also let's do client dispute manager. So the tool that you're gonna need, which is completely free, is going to be detailed SEO, which is a Chrome extension that allows you to view the headers, uh, has different features on it, and it's all for free. So so when I'm looking at the competitors, I want to know what other type of articles are they writing on the site that allows them to uh, have some type of authority. So if you look at Detailed SEO, uh, we can go ahead and go to Advanced. And at the bottom, we'll have a tools feature here, which you can do manually, but I just use Detailed SEO because I like it. But go ahead and perform a site colon domain.com search for this specific website. And what this does is for any keyword or, you know, uh, word that you include, it's going to show up all of the content that is currently indexed for that specific term that has that term inside of the articles or pages. So let's do credit repair. And we're going to find all of the credit repair uh, uh, pages or posts that are currently indexed that we could probably model or get ideas from so we can build topical authority within the specific uh, topic. So just from this alone, we're seeing here that they have a bunch of content around do credit repair services actually work, California credit repair, best credit repair companies, best online credit repair services, uh, best credit repair with 30 days. This is what you want to do in order to uh, gather more data around a specific topic. And this will allow you to become a topical authority by publishing content that models your competitors and you make them better than your competitors. And this is usually what I do on top of everything else that we just explained with Ahrefs and Glimpse. So now that you found all of your keywords, which I've done too, you want to start building your content plan. Now, this is how I start every project. And this is what a topic cluster should somewhat look like. Um, and again, you can be using Trello. You can use a mind mapping system. You can use Google Sheets or whatever is easier for you to organize and plan your content. Now, this is what I've done for the credit repair niche. So if you look at here, I have a pillar post, which is the first article that I'm going to write on my site. And the title is going to be credit repair tips. This is going to be a long listicle format such as, you know, 27 plus credit per tips, 30 plus credit per tips and offer as much value as I can in that post and make the article as good as possible for the pillar post. Next up, the what I like to do is I like to create my transactional post next because this allows me to think about all my informational content afterward. So the transactional post is going to be best credit repair software for this example. And once I've written the article, which I have and Guys, I'm actually ranking on the first page of Google in the making of this video, so you can probably see my website anyways. Now, next up is I'm going to write all the informational posts, and that's going to be how to start a credit per business, how to fix credit, how to send out dispute letters, how to contact the major credit bureaus, how to X, Y, Z, and I'm going to continue creating how to content related to credit repair software. Then I'm going to write all the product reviews. So I have all the individual companies that I talk about in that transactional post. I'm writing a review for credit repair cloud, dispute B, credit versio, Dovely, etc. Then I go deeper down that funnel and then I'm talking about product alternatives. And then last but not least, I'm creating product comparison alternatives. And then on the left hand corner, you're going to have other related topics. You can still internally link all of these articles together 
And as long as they're somewhat relevant or it makes sense without you forcing the internal link or the anchor text in your article, this will allow you to build topic authority in a specific niche. And this is what I've been doing. It's working for the credit site right now. And overall, it's a simple process because I know and I can visualize exactly what I need to do in order to rank my articles online. So come up with your own content plan. Think about how you want to structure it. But you always want to start with the pillar post one transactional post and then a ton of tra uh, informational and then product reviews, product alternatives, and just follow this process for every single uh, topic that you're in. Now that you've come up with your content plan, you're going to start writing your blog post. Now, this is the fun part. This is the uh, messy part. And this can be different for everyone because there's so many different AI writing tools you can use. There's so many different assisting tools. You can use a freelance writer. You can hire someone. You can do all of this in-house. You can do it yourself. And again, you can use AI writing software to help you through this process. So there's so many different ideas. But again, for me, I will explain what I'm doing. So no matter what, every article that you write needs to be high quality and offer information gain, which means you're going to include a unique and new information that isn't found anywhere else. This is going to look great for you. It's going to look good and it's going to build trust with your visitors and also with Google. Next up, before you even publish anything, you want to make sure that you have five blog posts ready. Then you can start publishing. Now, you're going to want to create a repeatable process every single time. And that means you're going to want to create blog post templates. So I have blog post templates for all of my processes. And I also do this whenever I outsource some writing. I have SOPs in place that work for my brand. So build blog post templates, look at what your competition is doing and create a template for yourself. Next up, you're going to want to decide on a publishing cadence, meaning are you going to be publishing one to two articles a week or are you going to go all out and do three to four articles a week? Next up, you want to have a content updating schedule. So every time you publish an article in your Google Sheet or in you know your project management system, you want to make sure that you have an updating date where you can come back and make sure that you revise that post. Maybe the pricing changed for a product review. Maybe a new information has come out on a specific trend or topic, and you need to update that in your article. You want to update your post every three to six months. This is 100% like needs to happen because Google loves fresh content. Now, my blog writing tools that I'm currently using is Surfer SEO for content optimization and planning. I use Detailed SEO's Chrome extension, which is completely free. And this allows me to view headings. It allows me to view schema and other things that are, that are on specifically on a specific page. Then I use ChatGPT or Gemini. I use Perplexity AI to help me come up and find source material. And then I use Canva for graphic design. I mean, the blog writing tool stack can change for everyone. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can continue trying out different tools. Uh, sometimes I use Koala Writer or I use Agility Writer. So both of these are really great for me. Um, but this is my tool stack for now. And hopefully, you know, let me know in the comments what your tool stack is and we can go from there. So here's my simple blog post checklist. Now, this is a checklist that I use before hitting publish. I also have a more advanced SEO audit checklist that I use in the description below. You can also check that out if you want to. But this is the beginner's guide to just making sure that your content looks good before you hit publish. So uh, just a quick scan. Number one, you want to write a title and meta description that includes the main keyword. Why? Because you want to answer the search intent and you want to make sure that that query that someone's searching for is in your title. It's in your meta description or your intro. You want to ensure that your blog post URL does not contain any numbers. That means no years, no numbers. You want it to be nice and clean and have nothing that will ruin it for future updates. Next up, you want to have a proper heading structure. So you have one H1, you have H2s, multiple H3s, and potentially H4s. Then you want to make sure that your introduction answers the question that your search, the visitor is searching for. So that is the search intent. Next up, you want to make sure that your article has a table of contents and any user friendly blocks like alerts or call to actions and make it look very nice and pretty. Next up, you want to add any relevant videos for better on time page metrics. So in every single one of my blog posts, I'm going to be adding YouTube videos that kind of pair well with my content. So making sure that I produce those videos or I source them correctly, that's going to be a huge part of my process when it comes to keeping people on the page longer because the higher 
retention rate you have, the more Google kind of favors your content. Just skipping through a few of these, you want to make sure that you have uh, internal links. You want to skim your entire article and make sure that it looks good. You want to run a grammar and spelling check uh, with Grammarly or whatever your favorite spelling checker is. You can use whatever tool you want. Uh, you also want to make sure that you fact check your content. Especially if you're using AI, you need to make sure that you fact check and edit your material. You want to make sure that you have at least one outbound link to an authoritative resource. So that's where perplexity comes in. And I use that to source material. And then before you hit publish, make sure that you have a featured image. You have a category in place. And if you have any meta tags for internal use, you want to make sure those are set correctly. You want to hit publish. You want to add internal links that are pointing to relevant articles within your own site and vice versa. You want to run a content audit using an optimization tool like Surfer SEO. And then you want to run a plagiarism check. So, you know, plagiarism is a huge thing, especially if you're using AI. I would be very, very hesitant to just publish content without checking everything, fact checking, spelling, all that. So do that before you hit publish. I promise you it's going to make uh, or break your site and it will take an extra 15, 20 minutes. So just do that, please. And that's kind of like my process for, you know, a simple blog post checklist. So next up is going to be link building. So link building, again, it's not one of my favorite things to do, and I rarely do it. But there is one type of link that I always go for. And sometimes I even outsource links. But first of all, I am not a link building expert. So this is just my take on links. Uh, the main thing that I do is I focus on getting links from media outlets on Connectively, Featured.com, Quoted, and you can use other sources sources, but Connectively used to be known as Haro. Uh, but the goal for these links is to build your overall brand and get links back to your root domain. You can also purchase links from trusted sources, but you have to be very careful about this because this can lead to man manual penalties if not done correctly. So you really need to proceed with caution on this. A few sites that are trusted you can check out are Rhino Rank, Fat Joe, Links That Rank, or again, my favorite is getting a referral that can provide you with receipts, meaning they show you proof of, uh, you know, that it's working, that the links are legitimate. And before you do any of that, you can also filter uh, and review the links that you want to purchase before you even get them, meaning you can go to Ahrefs, SEMrush and validate that that website is something that you want to get a link from. So that's kind of like my take on link building. I don't really like to focus on it too much, but again, I just use connectively featured.com quoted and I might do like a ABC link exchange here and there. Next up, we have monetizing the blog. So this is my favorite part of the process. Of course, I think anyone will want to monetize their blog. Uh, here are the kind of phases or steps that I think about when I'm, you know, monetizing a blog. So easy mode, it's going to be simple ads. This will be Google AdSense or Ezoic ads. Both of these platforms don't really have a threshold for you to, you know, apply for. You, of course, want to have traffic. And really where it starts to make sense is when you have about 5,000 to 10,000 monthly visitors, you can start to apply for these ad networks where it's going to make somewhat of a difference. Um, and that's going to be the easiest thing to do because it's semi-passive when it comes to applying and then they're just putting ads on your site uh, using a code. So other than that, that's the easy mode. Semi easy is another step up in ads, which is Mediavine or Raptive. So these are have a way, way higher uh, requirements, meaning that you need more than 50,000 traffic to, in order to actually apply for these companies. So it's a lot more expensive, uh, a lot more tedious, and it's just a lot better overall. But, you know, it's a little bit difficult. <laughs> so the next step into this is which is my favorite is medium affiliate marketing, meaning that you can apply to affiliate co companies and, you know, promote these companies and earn a commission for every sale that you make. You have you don't have to do any back end work. You don't have to do customer service. So you can apply for companies using uh, affiliate networks like Impact Radius, uh, CJ Affiliate. You know, there's a ton of different places like Partner Stack. There's uh, you know, individual private affiliate networks for companies that run their own in their own network. Now, next up, we have semi medium, which is sponsorships. This is one step above affiliate marketing. So let's say a company doesn't have an affiliate program yet or their commission rate is terrible. You can actually reach out to the brand and see if you can partner with them and do a sponsorship deal. Most of the time you'll get paid up front or on a contract basis instead of a commission basis. So most people like sponsorships instead of affiliates because you can get paid up front 
and you know exactly how much you're going to make. With affiliates, it's a little on and off. Next up, we have courses, digital products, and coaching, which is way, way harder. And, you know, it's going to lead to a better uh, outcome for you when it comes to revenue. But you actually need to, you know, host and manage the course, digital product. You also, you need to make sure that you're delivering as much value as you can as a coach. So these three things are, you know, kind of difficult. In the credit repair site that I'm working on, I'm going to be selling a course. So it's going to be like a done for you, done with you course on sending out dispute letters and fixing credit. And then we can also offer like credit coaching. So they can hop on a Zoom call and we can help them with their dispute letters and kind of go through that process. We can also sell digital products, which is going to be, you know, dispute letter templates, advanced templates that they can use for, you know, $17, $27. Now the very hard but worth it uh, way to monetize your blog is building a community or software. So for me in the credit space, just thinking about it, a community around credit and teaching people how to build credit, you can make a ton of money because people are always looking to improve their credit. They're looking to talk to other people about credit. And there's also credit cards, credit repair, and just a, building a community. You can do this on a platform like school and use that to uh, bring in revenue and host your entire community platform. Next up would be software. So in the credit space, I can go ahead and build a credit repair software of my own. I could also white label credit repair software. And this is all going back to MRR and bringing in monthly recurring revenue. So one of these two things are probably going to be the, you know, the biggest revenue generating for you. It just really depends on your goals, but this is the way you can monetize a blog. Last but not least, we want to leverage other platforms. So this goes back to what I said earlier. You need to build a legitimate brand that's going to be on all platforms, not just a niche site or a blog. You need to build on other platforms. That's just the name of the game nowadays. In order to beat or combat AI, you need to build a brand. And that's what I'm doing for the credit site. You already know that I'm building a YouTube channel. I have the blog. And I might be doing short form content in the near future, but those are the two traffic sources that I'm going to be focusing on. So again, with the YouTube channel, I'm going to use the blog to gain more authority and brand searches because I want people to be typing in my brand name and finding that on Google or other platform. The goal is to become the go to source in credit repair and credit building. So that is my YouTube channel as of right now. Again, some things are blurred out, but I'm pretty sure most of you will find the channel and find the website either way. So let me know if you end up finding that in the comments. But overall, I think this is a process that I'm going to stick with for about a year to two years. I'm going to continue doing this over and over again. Uh, and again, I'm going to have like other videos around it. But again, you guys know that I'm a content creator, so I just don't focus on a blog. I love YouTube. I love short form content. I love writing and doing SEO. And my process is to show you the entire realm of what I do and not just teach SEO. So the whole goal here is, again, keep publishing content. With all that said, do not give up. Keep hitting publish because SEO and being a creator can take months to see results. But once you do it, no one can stop you. And I want the same for you. So go ahead and do the site, hit publish, hit record, make mistakes, and you can fix and repeat this process and make it easier every single time. Now, I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to teach others how to do it. And this YouTube channel is, you know, growing at a rapid rate because of you. And I really am thankful for that. So let's go ahead and just like set up the site and follow the process. And I'll keep publishing content as long as you're doing the same. Now. We'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave comments in the description. You can also opt into my lead magnet to go ahead and learn more about uh, the blog post checklist and what I do to hit publish and make sure that my content ranks on Google. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.